It's called communication of vision, but basically it is communicating your ideas to other people. And this can take the form of presenting an idea or just walking into your boss's office and saying, hey, I need to talk to you about something. So if you're communicating something to somebody, you're a salesman, right? And the better that you communicate, the better your ideas will be received. And sometimes whether a product gets greenlit or not, whether a product actually is well received or not, is solely based on your ability to sell that product. One of the keys to having people understand what you're talking about is to use analogies and pick something that everybody is familiar with. It's much easier to build upon what people already know than it is to build an idea from scratch, right? So, for example, if I were to try to pitch a particular game and I was to say, it's gonna be like an Indiana Jones style game, except you're a chick and you have guns. That's kind of Laura Croft, isn't it? Yeah, that took me about two seconds to explain. Now, if I was trying to describe it from scratch, it could take me a half an hour. So you basically always want to describe it as quickly as possible using things that people already know and build upon those. It's a combination of A, B, and C. This meets this meets this. One of the things that you'll run into is that your idea seems too complicated. If your idea seems too complicated and you can't express your idea, people aren't going to accept it as quickly. You want to be able to explain it very fast, very simply, because every good idea is built on a very simple, easily recognizable concept. A simple no-brainer is what you're looking for. So this is where your energy comes into play. You're the guy who cares the most about your product in the entire room. So if you don't care about it, why should the guy that you're talking to care about it? Selling an idea is about changing the way people think. Your idea is to convince them that this is a great idea. You're, they, they can't live without this idea, right? And be prepared to address preconceived notions that people have on what something is, right? So you need to overcome that. So the way to overcome that is ask yourself the hard questions in advance. Why do I care? What do you need me for? Why are they sitting there listening to you? And how is this going to be good? And why do they need this in their lives? When you speak, if you get defensive, it shows that you're not 100% convinced of your ideas. If I'm up here and I'm trying to tell you that the moon is made out of cheese, and you try to tell me that the moon is not made out of cheese, and I, and I get really aggravated by that comment, and I get defensive, and I start to kind of attack you, that just shows that I'm not 100% convinced. And you should always welcome questions as further opportunity to, to speak. The beauty of having people ask questions is that they want you to refine your ideas. They want you to tell me more, tell me more, right? And so a question is just an opportunity to do more convincing of your audience. When somebody brings up an idea or a concern, you don't want to dismiss it, you want to validate it. If you validate their concerns and go, you know, that's a really good point. Let me speak to that point, blah, blah, blah. You want to create a dialogue and a trust with the people that you're speaking to. If they can feel like you're on the same page, they want to like you, they don't want you to be arrogant, they want you to have a conversation with them, they want you to explain what it is that you're trying to explain in a, in a way that they can understand and they can get on board with this. So there's a series of questions that I want, I want you to be aware of and, and you should ask yourself when you are presenting to anybody. Question one, how does the other person perceive the problem or opportunity? And it may be obvious to you that this is a problem, but it might not be obvious to the other people. Or it may be completely obvious to you that this is a no-brainer and this is something they should do, but they might not even realize it. They might not even realize that it's, uh, it's an issue or there's a market for this or this is something that they should be even involved in. And then you want to address any false assumptions that they might have with this idea. If you're telling them that, I think that video games could help with education. And they say, how is it that Grand Theft Auto is going to help people learn? Now you have to overcome, see this is what I'm talking about, you have to overcome the assumption that video games are, to this person, violent and uh, non-productive. And you say, all right, not all video games, I'm telling you the concept of video games, gamification can help. 
and then you explain what types of games could be helpful to the development of people in schools. So question two, can you explain your idea in 15 words or less? If you can't describe what you're talking about in 15 words or less, it's too, way too complicated. It's called the top-down approach. So what you want to do is you want to start with the, the big idea. Then you drill down to the next level, you give more information, you drill down to the next level, right? If it takes you too long to explain your idea, nobody likes to feel dumb. And if you make them feel dumb, they're not going to listen to what you have to say. So when you explain it, and you explain it in 15 words or less, right, they're going to want to know more. And then they will ask you for more. But the beauty of this is if they don't ask you and they go, that's a fantastic idea. Let's go do that. You're good to go. You can stop. Number three. So what role does this person have in the decision-making process? Who are you talking to? If you're talking to the CEO, you want to tailor your presentation towards that person. Who is this person that you're presenting to and what's important to that person? You know, it all changes. It changes based on who you're talking to. So if you can't do that, then you're going to have a problem. You want to be able to tailor it directly towards the people that you're, that you're presenting to. Adapting your approach. Number four. So what's your goal? And this is a good question, not just for presenting, but every time you walk into your boss's office. What do you want? Basically, anytime you walk into anybody's office, they're going to think, what do you want? If you don't know why you're there, you shouldn't be there in the first place. So you might only have one shot at it. So don't screw it up. So think about it. Think about what you're going to say before you walk into that office. If you're not confident, why should I be confident? If somebody walks into my office and they say, hey, um, I got this idea, I would think, oh, man, another idea. But if somebody walks in and says, I had this epiphany, the best idea ever, I'd say, well, lay it on me. I want to hear this. This, this sounds good. <laughs> Whatever this is, you got me. I'm interested, right? And it's about energy, that energy right there. Question five. What is the basis of your credibility with the person that you're speaking to? What entitles you to actually walk into their office? Do you have currency to spend with that person? If you've done a lot of work with this person, if you've produced a lot of different things for this person, that's why they're listening to you. So knowing where your credibility comes from is important, and then leverage that credibility. Question six. So will your ideas conflict with any of these person's beliefs? If you present an idea that collides with a person's beliefs, you're going to get resistance from day one. So you want to hit up their belief system and you want to speak to that particular area and then you want to move from there into what you're trying to say. You don't want to argue with them about their belief system. You want to address it, try to appease it, and then move on. If they believe something and you don't address it, they're going to argue with you about it. Question seven. So what's in it for them? Because ideas mean change. And if you are presenting a new idea, you're going to have to change, they're going to have to change the way they do things. And people don't really like change. So you want to tell them how the change benefits them. And then as a side note, they're going to wonder what's in it for you. So you say, it's a win-win. You get this, I get this. And if you can make it personal, what would they personally achieve? Like if I say the company gets this, they're going to think, OK, that's all fine and well. But I get paid salary, and it's not like I'm going to be making any more money. So you're going to increase my workload for the same amount of money. So what's in it for them personally? And the closer you can get to that, the better off you're going to be. That's basically it, and that's what I wanted to kind of share with you guys on kind of how to present ideas. It's about how to communicate ideas and how to get buy-in. That's what it's all about.